Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our first workshop of our convention. It's good to see so many familiar faces and thank you all for sharing with us where you're from. Uh, my name is Stacey Reddy. I'm the president-elect for Colorado PTA. I'm here with the lovely Karen Hobson, who will be popping in in just a second. And we're super excited to get to present to you PTA 101. This is sort of our intro to PTA information. And so on, with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Karen to talk to you for a sec and we'll get going. So good morning, as Stacy said, I'm Karen Hobson and I am the leadership chair for Colorado PTA. Um, I'm also the leadership chair for El Paso Council PTA down in Colorado Springs area. And I'm a long time, lifetime PTA advocate. So I am very biased um, that PTA is the greatest association out there. And so if you ever, ever, ever have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and ask. There's no question that's too small. There's some that's pretty big. And so I get help from other people to get those answered because I honestly don't know everything, but I'm trying to learn. So if you get some questions to stump me, that's great. And you might get a star today. So with that, we will go ahead and start the presentation. Hello and welcome to PTA 101. Give you some foundational knowledge for successful PTA. Who doesn't like a little Dr. Seuss? The discussion begins with children having no voice. As parents, if we don't speak on behalf of children, who will? It was 1987 when the National Congress of Mothers was established, renamed to the National Congress of Parents and Teachers in 1924. I'll give you a minute to look over these quotes from one of our co-founders. Better schools, healthier children, stronger families. These are goals that could be heard at PTA meetings today, just as they were heard at the first PTA meeting in 1897, PTA was formed because these strong, passionate women had a vision and were concerned about the well being of children. Alice McClellan Burney was a businesswoman and mother of three daughters. She envisioned a parents' organization that would help children everywhere. She and 17 other women met at the home of Phoebe Apperson Hurst, mother of William Randolph Hurst, to plan their first event taking place. February 17th through the 19th, 1897. Expecting at most 200 attendees, 2,000 showed up and the event had to be moved to a larger location. Imagine establishing the National Congress of Mothers before women had the right to vote. In 1926, Selena Sloan Butler, with the help of National PTA, founded the National Congress of Colored Parents and Teachers in Atlanta, Georgia, to function in states that legally mandated segregation. In 1970, these two Congresses united. Our founders represented women of imagination and courage. They had a simple idea to improve the lives and future of all children. They understood the power of individual action, worked beyond the accepted barriers of their day, and took action to change the world for all children. Many of us started our PTA journey to help our child, but the work we do, the work we commit to, benefits all children. The theme of the first convention was, all children are our children. How appropriate that our tagline is every child one voice. Our children are our future. Research concludes that there is a positive and convincing relationship between parent family engagement and student success to meet the needs of the future, whether it's continuing education or joining the workforce. Parents recall how important those early experiences were in shaping their child's attitude and feelings about school and education. The work we do helps make these positive experiences for all children. Creating that bridge between home and school also ensures families feel comfortable and learn how to appropriately advocate for their child's success in school. 
PTA has influenced those first experiences through the advocacy efforts here in Colorado and nationwide. PTAs have rallied their voices together to make a difference in the lives of all children. Did you know that the parent involvement legislation referred to in the Colorado milestones? Your PTA is required to have a liaison to the accountability committee. Some of you may be active with your accountability committee or school board. You are advocating for not only your child, but for all the children at your school or in your district. PTA developed the national standards for family school partnerships, realizing that connecting the pieces will provide the framework for families, schools, and communities to work together in support of students' success. Let's take a closer look. Family school engagement includes school volunteers or supporters of school programs, in the classroom, field trips, PTA programs, attending school functions. Opportunities to share concerns with the school, understanding assessment results, having a voice with your own child, relative, or friend's child. You can be reading to them, having conversation, knowing their friends, as well as providing a place and time to do homework and eat breakfast every day helping other parents and teachers reaches more children. PTA does not replace or duplicate the activities already in place at your school, but it strengthens and enhances parent-family engagement. Be a full partner by participating in decisions. This could be by attending PTA and accountability meetings, filling out surveys, voicing concerns, Reach out to local businesses and organizations enables understanding from those that may not have children in school. Strong schools help support a strong community. The National PTA is the oldest and largest volunteer association working exclusively on behalf of all children and youth. For over 120 years, PTA has promoted the education, health and safety of children and families. So now we'll send you to a breakout room where you'll be tasked with one of these standards. So when you're assigned to a breakout room, um, the name of the breakout room is going to be one of the six standards that was shown. And so what I'd like you to do within the group is discuss how your school or PTA fulfills those standards. Um, they'll probably be about five, the six of you in each room. So make sure everyone gets an opportunity to share. And some of you may just want to listen because maybe you're not at that point yet. Um, but um, you're going to share when we bring you back. Uh, we'll have somebody maybe share out uh, one or two things and um, continue on the presentation. So hope that makes sense. If not, oh well. <laughs> no, not, not oh well. We'll uh, put it in the chat and, and we'll get you answered there. So she's got two more to name. So if anybody has any comments or questions right now, I can take a couple maybe. I put a link in the chat for um, those national standards if you want to learn more. There's a lot of great information on uh, pta.org for any of your needs really. So take advantage of those uh, resources. Hey, Karen. Oh, in Compass Heights, our brand new week old uh, PTA. Welcome, welcome. Ready to go. All right, she's going to assign you to breakout rooms. Bye. Okay, welcome back, everybody. I hope there were some good conversations going on. What we'll do at this point is we'll go um, with each standard and have somebody kind of share out one thing that stood out to them. We'll take about maybe 10 minutes to do this. So don't dominate because there's six standards. So somebody from the welcoming all families breakout room want to share something. Don't be shy. You can turn your video off and we won't see you.
Oh, okay. We'll give you time to think. How Hi, about Karen. communicating effectively? We were all looking for more suggestions from each other. They, we all kind of agreed that continuity, so having meetings at the same time every month, calls at the same time, things that families knew was going to happen that wasn't sporadic was a positive for our PTA. So Steve, if you're trying to talk, you were on mute. Oh. I heard what she said. Okay, great, great, great feedback. Um, supporting student success. Find the mute button there. Um, we had quite a few uh, brand new PTA members. A lot of lot of kindergarten parents, so I'm really excited that uh, that they were talking, and they um, they along with me, who's been around way too long. Um, it no. Seems, <laughs> it seems like a lot of it. I love the one that stood out to me. What I thought was really neat was um, they said to have a positive association with the school during COVID. So they did fundraisers where they tied things in, so they got the kids excited still about school, even though they weren't able to be there. Um, with the, the smelly pencils, I think is what they had, but they had something that connected them to the school in a positive way. So it, it's, it's an attitude. Um, and then I thought that was really neat in terms of having a good attitude is student success, right? And then the other, of course, is communication across with parents, newsletters, connections with principals, um, and, and how that ties in with their, their children. So I think all of that is, is great ways to have um, student success. So that's a, the elementary. And one quick point about the high school that I brought up was that we have a help center that parents can help with. They also have student tutors. So it's more of a parent teacher student, if you will, connection. Um, so there's also that. And we were able to do that during COVID as well. Excellent, thanks. So the next one would be speaking up for every child. So we had um, a good mix of some new parents and old parents and teachers and um, middle school, elementary school, high school, a good range. So we had a good conversation. Um, we were mostly talking about how in this year um, it was hard, sometimes a challenge to connect everybody because you had some in-person learners, you had online learners, you, we had a shutdown, we had, you know, it was just kind of a, a mix of how everybody was able to access their learning um, and recognizing that it was just kind of a really weird year. And then what are we gonna do um, moving forward to welcome everybody back, you know, let's say we're assuming that we're going to be 100% in the building full time. Um, and also looking at what is our PTA board and our membership? Is it representative of our school community and our larger, um, you know, neighborhood community? Um, and making sure that, you know, we say that we're advocating for every child, um, but really trying to make sure that we really are um, and hitting all of those groups of kids and families and making them feel welcome. Nice, wonderful. How about the sharing power? Okay. We'll move on to collaborating with the community. Um, I'll speak up for our group. Um, so we uh, we had a lot of new people as well, like I heard in another group. And um, I guess the main question or thought um, that was expressed about um, how a lot of times this takes the form of fundraising, um, particularly where the PTAs um, the parents tend to have more privilege um, and um, kind of wondering about what are some other ways to collaborate with community that don't necessarily involve fundraising. So some of the ideas that I've um, 
gathered from other workshops that I've done or with RPTA is, is inviting community members as speakers. So like at the high school, when I was involved, we had somebody from Master Drive that came and talked about safe teen driving. And so it wasn't a fundraiser, but it was information that was valuable for parents and new drivers on the road. Um, and they weren't selling anything. So it was just a presentation for information. You know, you could do that with um, you know, mental health, you could do that with tobacco, obesity, just whatever issue maybe your community may be facing. Look in your community if you have, you know, if you have a senior center close, I, I bet those folks would love to volunteer with some kids. Um, any other ideas out there? We, we weren't able to do it this year, um, but one thing we discussed doing was having uh, a, like a yoga instructor come in and, for, um, and do a yoga class or a dance class. And we figured out that we could do it, you know, um, even outdoors and everyone puts their mats six feet apart or 10 feet apart or whatever, but then it started snowing. So we didn't get to do it, but we're going to hopefully do something like that by bring, inviting in, you know, a yoga studio or a dance teacher. Um, I'm in an elementary school and there's a great dance studio up in our area um, that caters to three to eight year olds. And so have her come do that. Um, I, I, one thing, you know, I, I, I like what you said about it not being a um, something they're trying to sell, but um, so they may be trying to sell classes for that, but also something just that could be fun for the students and parents to do together. And, you know, we did figure out a way to do it outside, but then it snowed. So <laughs> <laughs> yep. next year. Right, right next. <laughs> That's right. So, um, and, and I want to apologize to the welcoming all families group. I had my computer on mute because I'm next to Stacy and we had feedback. And so if you were speaking, I probably interrupted you. So if you wanted to repeat what you said, I'm more than welcome to give you that opportunity. I was um, going to just kind of touch on a few things we talked about. We also had quite a few new people, um, young parents, as far, as far as like kindergarten, first grade. Um, a couple of things that came up as far, you know, to welcome everybody into the school community was um, some of the meeting or the meeting minutes are sent out to all the families, not just PTA members. So that way parents who aren't, or families who aren't members still get to see what's going on within the school. Another really good idea um, that is resonating in my mind is using surveys to send out to parents, staff, to administration, kind of separate the three saying, what can we do to help you? What do you need from us? How can we collaborate um, together? So that was a big takeaway for me. Um, so those are the kind of the things we talked about. Awesome, thank you. And I apologize for <laughs> my learning curve here with this virtual convention. So thank you for your grace. And we will continue on with the next part of the video. PTA gets results by helping parents and families, schools and communities work together for all children. More than 85 rigorous research studies conducted over 30 years show that kids do better when parents are involved. Grades are higher, test scores improve, attendance increases. PTAs keep parents informed. Involved parents can understand the challenges schools face and become part of the solution. PTAs support education through active participation and advocacy. PTAs improve children's well-being. PTAs focus on what students need to be successful in their learning, including proper nutrition and safe healthy environments. PTAs can help schools fulfill parent involvement requirements in the law known as Every Student Succeeds Act, or ESSA. Why? Because PTA's definition of parent involvement is the definition used in ESSA. Getting involved in PTA is the best way to organize parent engagement. PTAs benefit everyone. Strong schools mean strong communities. PTA parents saw the need to help children and give them a voice. PTA provides the opportunities for strengthening and enhancing family engagement through support and experience of leaders across the nation and the state. You have a network to tap into, take advantage. Training is localized for your volunteers. Resources and programs 
and the ability to connect with other child-centered organizations for ideas and support. Connecting with other advocacy organizations, such as Great Schools Thriving Communities and Great Education Colorado, makes our voice stronger. Some programs include our premier Reflections Cultural Arts Program, awards, discounts for members through our partnerships. In fact, some local PTAs have arranged for member benefits through local businesses in their community. Bylaws for efficient governing, accountability guidance as a nonprofit, discounted insurance to protect your elected officers and your PTA's assets, and media attention. National PTA offers fantastic programs such as Reflections, which I mentioned before, where students can showcase their talents in literature, visual arts, photography, music composition, dance choreography, and film production. Whether PTAs are supporting schools' efforts to combat cyberbullying, suicide awareness, rising obesity rates, literacy, or many other topics, National PTA offers programs for a myriad of these topics. Helping your PTA find the right fit. Partner with your school by taking advantage of these programs. Besides programs for your PTA, National PTA's website has a wealth of information to help families. Notes from the Backpack podcast are usually less than a half hour and have included such topics as surviving quarantine with your teen, raising kids who embrace race, enhancing parent-teacher partnerships. Take a listen, take a look. There might be something that interests you. Parents' guides to student success are broken down by grade level and will help parents understand what their child should be learning and tips for helping them at home. These resources are only valuable to your families if they know about them. Many of these resources are also available in Spanish. Networking with other PTA members is powerful, such as at conventions and conferences. Although the National PTA Convention is virtual again this year, there are opportunities to make connections and gather valuable information. We're all strapped for time, but making time to explore these events is beneficial. Activity suggestions, customizable posters and flyers, and resources will actually save you time as you plan events to benefit your students and teachers. National PTA works with country leaders in a diverse area of groups to provide dialogue, resources, and information that will help schools embrace diversity and inclusion. Let's support the needs of every child. Again, take advantage of your PTA membership. These topics are just a sampling of e-learning courses available to take when your own schedule allows. Share these opportunities with other members in your PTA. Model lifelong learning for your child. Colorado PTA is here for you. Use the handbook to answer many questions that might arise. Take advantage of training. This will help you become more comfortable as a volunteer leader. Don't be afraid to ask questions about your PTA's financial challenges. Many issues can be resolved quickly before they impact your nonprofit status. Publicize opportunities for your students, such as participation in reflections or scholarship opportunities. Member Hub was rolled out this year to help your PTA collect dues online, send notifications, sell spiritware, promote events, and much more. If you haven't taken advantage of this tool, contact the Colorado PTA office or your field service representative to get started. So, so I'm not going to do the survey so that we'll have more time for questions at the end. So it was just a quick survey to see if you've learned something new and you're going to use some of these resources. So you're not really missing anything and we'll just continue on.
As alluded to throughout, PTA has a vast network of support. This map helps show the relationship between National PTA, Colorado PTA, and you, the local unit. You can see the state is divided into five geographical regions. Coordinators are appointed to work with PTAs to provide training and support. There are also five councils that provide support to an even smaller area, such as a school district or county. This enables PTA leaders to provide even better support because they understand the climate and culture of their area. PTA is a grassroots association with the local unit as the most important part. As the slide says, everyone, regardless of whether they currently have children in school, can become a member. Community members broaden the perspective and bring more resources to the school. Community members gain access to information on current issues. PTA is open to anyone who supports the mission and purposes of PTA. Your tax exempt status under the 501c3 not for profit is granted under the IRS code through the Colorado PTA. Donations, including membership dues, may be tax deductible. Please consult the tax advisor for more information. As a nonprofit, we're non commercial. Do not endorse products, companies, or foundations. You may accept and acknowledge contributions of sponsors of PTA programs. Should you seek business partners, be sure to have a policy that outlines those prices and expectations between the partner and your PTA. You're also non-sectarian. Welcome into membership people representing a diversity of cultures, ethnic backgrounds, and political and religious beliefs, creed, color, race, gender, or economic or educational status are irrelevant to the qualifications for membership. We're also nonpartisan. We do not endorse candidates. We support issues relating to children as stated in the PTA mission and the purposes found in the bylaws. PTAs may vote to support their district's bond or mill levy ballot issue or statewide issues impacting education. PTAs can host school board candidate forums as long as all candidates are invited. Check with your district for any policies or procedures you need to follow, such as renting room space or table space. These basic policies ensure a unity of purpose through the member's commitment to the national PTA purposes and help protect the association and its members from exploitation. Your bylaws are a roadmap for operations based on national PTA, Colorado PTA, and IRS requirements. You'll find such information as your fiscal year, elected officers, month for election, amount of dues, how many minimum membership meetings you must have a year, how many constitute a quorum, how to fill a vacancy if someone resigns, and much more. Be familiar with them. Make sure to have a copy at your meetings. If you can't locate your copy, contact the office or your field service representative. Colorado PTA requires you to submit your bylaws every three years for review. A template is provided for easy updating of your information. One must be a member of your PTA to vote at your PTA meetings. Make sure to have a current list of members at the meeting in case a vote is taken, especially if it's a contentious issue. Make sure your minutes are clear as to what was voted on. The $6.25 shown is the amount your PTA sends per member to Colorado PTA. Colorado PTA will take care of paying the national PTA their portion. Councils receive a dollar back per member. Dues are used at all levels for training, resource materials, and support to local units. We can help our children by working together on their behalf.
Let's take advantage of all PTA has to offer. Let's make sure our successors are aware of these opportunities too. Thanks for joining us today and we'll have some time for questions and answers. Okay. Karen. Okay. Karen. So can you what kind me? of questions do we have out there? Karen, can you hear me? Yes, I can. So a, a quick question for you, and, and I apologize, this might not mean much to some of the new parents here, but um, there's been a blending of PTA and SAC missions over the years. How do you see us keeping those separate? So PTA doesn't default to being the, 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 the party group, you know, the fundraising group and SAC being the let's take care of our kids in school accountability. Can you, can you address that and help me? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I know that's been an issue at many schools and, and typically it happens because the same parents tend to go to the SAC meetings, the accountability and PTA. So it's the same parents and the principal's giving his update or her update to the same people and so they come to combined meetings or one meets right after the other. So I think it's important for people to understand the purpose of the accountability committee and perhaps um, you know, educating the PTA members that, that the accountability is a separate committee that's actually required by law to have in every school. So PTA is just required to have um, um, a liaison to the accountability committee. So I think even if the, the meeting is run kind of together, try to emphasize the, the separation. And so maybe if it's a combined agenda, make sure there's PTA space and accountability space separate and make sure that you know they know that the budget belongs to the PTA and the PTA members. It doesn't belong to the principal. You know, the principal has one vote. And so that's important to remember too, because some principals are a little more influential in their ask for the PTA. And a lot of PTAs have become ATMs for the school and that's not what we want. We certainly wanna provide and support our kids in schools and make lives easier, but you know, just kind of keep that separation and um, that's the guidance I can give for that. Anybody else? Got about five minutes left, so. For all of us newbies, because it sounds like there's a lot of us that are um, jumping in full force with kindergartners. Uh, in the um, <laughs> what What's the bit, what's the best takeaway for us to hold on to from PTA 101 that we can take into? Because it sounds like there's several people that are jumping into the president role or vice president role or, you know, onto the board and, uh, have not had, or in a brand new school like Leticia. And uh, so would love any, what's the best thing that we can take with us uh, to get our, to get started and, and make it a successful year with. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally get it. There's so much information out there and you're probably getting bombarded and like, oh, where do I start? And I think the important thing to remember is you have help. You know, to me, that's been the beauty of PTA over the years. And, and as you can see, I've been around for a long time. Um, I now have a grandson that will be in kindergarten next year. So I'm starting all over again. But um, I think knowing that there's resources out there and taking advantage of them. And with Natural PTA, like if you go to their website, there is a wealth of information. They've pre-done templates. They've got flyers that you just add your PTA name. It saves you time. You can use it. If you reference their stuff, just give them credit. That's all they ask. So just the PTA brand, keep the PTA brand front and center. And if you have questions, reach out. That's why there's councils and region people and the state office, don't hesitate to reach out. So we know you're not gonna know it all. I don't even know it all. So don't be afraid. So, so that's kind of the takeaway to use the resources that are out there and just kind of familiarize yourself 
with what's out there. So you can go to it later, you know, when you have time, you know, at midnight or whenever that might be. So any other veterans out there want to give some advice as well? <laughs> Yes, I covered it. Yay. <laughs> Yay, me. <laughs> um, this, is a, <laughs> this is a um, Michelle, another newbie. Um, what can you talk more about the member hub? Or may, maybe there's um, maybe this isn't the right venue for that. I just was curious to learn more about that. I don't think we use that at our school right now. So member hub was new. We rolled it out this year for Colorado PTA. And it's a free service to your, your PTA. There is a workshop. There's actually two workshops from the member hub um, gurus. <laughs> so they'll be able to answer your questions. But basically what it will allow you to do is you can um, have your members sign up online. So you can gather and take payments online. You can um, send out newsletters, emails to your to your members or to any group that you set up. So you could set up a non-member group as well if you wanted to. You can sell um, spirit wear. Um, for this convention, we actually used it for the event. So you can collect money and have you know, registration and things like that if you have an event at your school. So there's lots of different things you can do with it. And so hopefully you'll be able to attend one of the member hub workshops and get the real like overview of what it does. Great. Thank you. Awesome that it's free too, because that was something that I was like, I don't know if we can afford this, but I will definitely check out one of the sessions. Right. Thank you. And yeah. And the big thing, and I hope they touch on it is in Colorado, you're not allowed to collect the service fees on credit cards. So you can ask the person signing up to donate that service charge. So like if your dues are $8, they're going to have to pay an extra dollar to cover the service fee for the credit card. So got it. Okay. Not just a little financial thing to touch base with. Well, anyway, I'd like to thank you all for your time. I hope that you got something out of the workshop. Um, again, I learned quite a bit uh, doing it this way. It's just different than being in a room and feeling the energy, but I can feel and see heads nodding and things like that, that you're all still awake. And uh, that's a good thing. So again, I had put my email in, in the chat. And so, you know, anytime you have a question, just feel free to reach out. And there's a link to the survey. So please fill out the survey and hope you enjoy your next workshop. Thanks, Karen. You bet. <laughs>